Hello, everybody. I'm Anthony Brown, and I write and illustrate picture books. Why do you think we have illustrations in books? Yeah? Because otherwise they would be rather dull. I totally agree. I think they'd be very dull without pictures. Any other reasons? Yeah? Maybe someone um, can't read and if they can just look at the pictures to understand what the story is about. It could be very helpful in, learning, in helping us to learn to read, exactly. I think it makes reading more enjoyable and I think that's very important. Changes. On Thursday morning at a quarter past ten, Joseph K noticed something strange about the kettle. Everything else in the kitchen was in its familiar place, clean and tidy. It even smelled the same as usual. The relationship between the text and the words is key, I think, with the picture book. Uh, you don't want the, the text to be describing what the pictures are already showing us. And in a way, you don't want the pictures to be showing what the text is telling us. It's, it's an interesting balance. There's a gap between the pictures and the words, a gap which at its best is filled by the imagination of the reader. OK, has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask me? Yes, have you got a question? How do you start your stories? <laughs> it's, it's different with each story. All ideas, every idea that anybody ever, ever has to make a story comes from somewhere else. It comes from something we've seen, something we've heard, something we've read. Things that happened to me when I was a boy. Some of the books are based on th things that actually happened to me when I was a boy. But of course I tell them in a different way. I might exaggerate them or try and make them more interesting and more exciting than they actually were. Willie the Wimp. Willie wouldn't hurt a fly. Willie worried about stepping on tiny insects every time he went for a walk. When someone knocked into him, he always said, Oh, I'm sorry. Even when it wasn't his fault. With me, I can look back now on, on Willie, for instance, and I can see that that relates directly to my childhood. The, the fact that I was a, a younger brother, constantly trying to be as good as his older brothers, in, in the way that Willie is a chimpanzee who lives in a world of gorillas that are all bigger and stronger and more powerful and more important than him. And I think it was, yeah, like that with, with me, and I think probably is for a lot of younger siblings. The Tunnel. Once upon a time, there lived a sister and brother who were not at all alike. In every way, they were different. In a way, my books are all autobiographical, actually, but which doesn't necessarily mean that these things happened to me. Uh, the book The Tunnel, for instance, was based on my brother and I, who knew a really dangerous tunnel when we were boys, and part of the idea of going into the tunnel was it was a kind of a rites of passage ceremony for lads in the area. His sister was frightened of the tunnel, and so she waited for him to come out again. She waited and waited, but he didn't come. She was close to tears. What could she do? She had to follow him into the tunnel. What is your favourite book and why? Probably my favourite book is the book Gorilla, and I'm not sure it's, whether it's my best book, but I think it was the first book I made where I felt I kind of knew what picture books were about. Does anybody know the story of Gorilla, roughly? Nearly all of you, about a little girl called Hannah who loves gorillas, but she's never seen a real gorilla. Why hasn't she seen a real gorilla? Do you know? Yeah? Because her dad will never take her to the zoo. Dad will never take her to the zoo. He never does anything, does he? When she asks him a question, he always says, not now, I'm busy. Now, one of the things I used to really like when I was a boy were those spot the difference pictures you get in... Um, comics, you know, and it's something I do in my books. Um, so these two pictures are like Spot the Difference. Here, Hannah's got a red top on because she's going to school. Here, Hannah's got a yellow top on because she's got her pyjamas on. It's the middle of the night. Can anybody tell me some other differences between the two pictures? Yeah? The dad's got a newspaper, the gorilla hasn't. The newspaper is almost like a, a, a wall, almost like a barrier that is built between them, isn't it? It's as though, as though if I was talking to you and I just talked like that and I didn't look at any of you. What about the colours in the pictures? Yes. Like, that one's all, like, boring and then the other one's a lot more happier. Happier, that's right. These are bright colours, aren't they? These are all a bit boring colours. So, by painting this in cold colours, it's suggesting that they have a cold relationship. The father is not very warm and friendly towards her. Hannah loved gorillas. 
She read books about gorillas, she watched gorillas on television, and she drew pictures of gorillas. But she had never seen a real gorilla. Her father didn't have time to take her to see one at the zoo. He didn't have time for anything. I think I'm generally interested in, 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 in books and stories which, um, which have tension in them. So I, I like to leave open endings, but in nearly every case, hopeful endings. The next morning, Hannah woke up and saw the toy gorilla. She smiled. Hannah rushed downstairs to tell her father what had happened. Happy birthday, love, he said. Do you want to go to the zoo? Hannah looked at him. She was very happy. Where do you like writing your books? Well, I have a little studio in the back of my house, a sort of conservatory that's got a lot of glass, so it's got a lot of light in, so I, I do them there. And when you say write my books, it's not quite like writing a story and then illustrating it. Uh, what I do, it's more like um, somebody making a film. These are, these are little dummies, which are little um, early versions of how the book's going to be. This is what, one of the early stages of when I've got an idea and I, I, I make a storyboard, then I turn the storyboard, um, which is a series of rectangles or little scribbles and words, and I turn them into a little book just so that I can see how the book develops, how the story develops, told by turning the pages, how the rhythm of the book works. Uh, this is the dummy of the book I'm working on at the moment. It's a very, very simple book, a book about uh, feelings. It starts off with this little character and a voice is saying, how do you feel? This is some of the finished artwork. This is him trying, uh, me trying to show him look as though he's listening to somebody saying, how do you feel? And I thought I'd try and vary the, the way I painted the picture. So here he's saying, well, sometimes I feel bored and I've painted it. In, in greys, I'm trying to reflect just the colours I use, how he's feeling. Sometimes I feel happy, so I'm showing him much bigger. He's taking up most of the, of the page. He's moving, he's celebrating. The background colour is this warm, sunny yellow. He's got a big smile on his face. Everything to try and, and show how he's feeling. It's still at early days. It's still lots of things will happen. The pictures won't necessarily end up looking like this. Yeah. Why do you have gorillas in most of your books? Um, I have gorillas in a lot of my books. Probably they're, they're not in most of my books, although people always think it's in most of my books. But um, I do like gorillas. I am fascinated by gorillas. And I've got about three or four reasons I can tell you. One, they're just fantastic things to draw. In the way that old people's faces with lines and wrinkles and lumps and bumps are very interesting to draw. Secondly, they are so much like us, but not quite, to look at. If I ever go into a zoo and look into a gorilla's eyes, it just feels so much like looking into a human being's eyes. And thirdly, um, I'm fascinated by gorillas because they remind me of my dad, who was a big man, physical man, but he also would sit down with us and draw pictures with us and write poems with us. Uh, this is my old dad's dressing gown that I found in a suitcase that belonged to my mother and this was the complete inspiration, along with my dad, for the book My Dad. It's a book that features the dressing gown in every page of the book, in every page of the father's wearing the dressing gown. My dad. My dad can eat like a horse and he can swim like a fish. He's as strong as a gorilla and as happy as a hippopotamus. He's all right, my dad. How long does it take to draw a picture? It varies very much depending on the picture. Um, a picture like this, for instance, that, that could take up to a week, I would think, to draw that, because of all the detail. Um, a simpler picture, something like That, for instance, I could do that in half a day, something like that. Mm. 
The other thing that I think is very important about pictures in books is that the pictures can sometimes tell us more than the words do. So I like to have pictures in books which give clues, clues that the words don't tell us. I want to show you what I mean by that. This is um, my version of Hansel and Gretel. Do you know the story of Hansel and Gretel, most of you? Yeah? This is the moment in the story where the mum is waking Hansel and Gretel up very early in the morning to take them out into the forest. But I'm trying to show that at this moment in the story that um, the mum seems a bit like another character in the story. Who do you think it might be that I'm trying to suggest she's a bit like? Um, is it the Wicked Witch? It is. How in the way that I've painted it? What makes you think about the Wicked Witch? Um, she's wearing black and she's got her hands on her hips. Yes, so she's looking kind of a bit angry, a bit aggressive. Anything else in the way I've painted her? There's a shadow which looks like a, um, it looks like a witch because there, there's got a picture of like a hat in the shape of a witch's hat and then a shadow of the mum. Well spotted. So all these references, all these tell us something that the words don't tell us. What's happened over a period of time is I've started to use those details in the background to help to tell the story. Voices in the park. First voice. It was time to take Victoria, our pedigree Labrador, and Charles, our son, for a walk. In Voices in the Park, for instance, I tried to use everything in the book. The backgrounds, the seasons of the year, the typeface, the colours, the style of drawing, to help to separate the four different stories of the four people who are telling us their version of the same day. Fourth voice. Dad had been really fed up, so I was pleased when he said we could take Albert to the park. Many of my books deal with ordinary environments and something out of the ordinary happens. If I want a real environment, I will take photographs. So having taken photographs, I, I in, in a way try not to take fantastically good photographs. I, I find that too distracting. I don't I think that there's the danger of just copying a photograph. In, in this book, in Me and You, here the bears have gone off on their stroll while the porridge is cooling down. The bench here is from the park. I, I, again, I wanted to use real settings to tell a slightly fantastical story. Have you always been able to draw? Yes, uh, but then I didn't draw any better than anybody here. When I was at school, I used to love drawing. As we get older, you start to think, oh, I can't draw. But you all can, and we all can. We naturally communicate through drawing. It's not really about drawing a vase of flowers to look like a photograph, it's, it's about communication. Children are full of stories and imagination. For me, I'm very lucky. For me, I've got the perfect job in the world because I'm being paid to do all the things I loved to do when I was a small boy. That, and that was to make up stories and to draw pictures. And that's the best job in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.